dog better? Welcome to America's Dog Whisperers with Mark German and Janice Wolf. This program will help make your good dog great and your great dog fabulous. Now, here's Mark and Janice. And I'm New Jersey's dog whisperer, Janice Wolf. Welcome to our show. I don't know if we can hear Mark, but... Uh, okay, that should be up now. Again, I'm Mark Sherman. I'm America's Dog Whisperer. I'm not the guy you see on TV. Um, Janice and I travel the country training people to become dog whisperers. We're looking for someone in every state across the country and even overseas to help us fill our mission, which is to help as many dogs as we can. Hi. So, um, yeah, today we're going to try to continue on with the four essentials to a stable dog. Uh, we'll try to get some of our dogs on here, too. We've had a lot of people uh, emailing and uh, texting us in and IMing us to see what our dogs look like. I have Rhodesian Ridgebacks, and Mark has Bernese Mountain Dogs, but guess what? All of them, dogs are dogs, no matter what breed they are, dogs are dogs. Um, so, Mark, today you want to discuss some of the more common uh, problems that people have, or do we want to get right into the four essentials? Well, let's start with the four essentials, and some people that are new can catch up, and the other ones have heard it before, they're going to hear it some more anyway. All dogs who have issues, I'm not talking about your good dogs out there, the golden retrievers, any other dog that sits for you and doesn't do anything wrong, this show is not for you. This show is for the people who own dogs who have issues, things that Things that you don't like about your dog, you wish you could change, we're going to show you how to do that. For instance, jumping on people when they come in your house. Perhaps marking the territory in the house. Excessive barking. Pulling on a leash. Knocking you downstairs. Those are just some of the things we're going to help you fix. And all you have to do is, is call in, let us know what the problem is, and we'll show you or tell you or teach you what you're doing wrong and what you need to do right to correct that behavior. Now the four essentials to a stable dog we've actually put into a book called There's Hope. It's called The Four Essentials to a Stable Dog. No matter what breed you have, how old the dog is, if your dog has issues this book will help. You can find that book on our website at America's Dog Whisperer Inc.com purchase that book, read it, follow along with us in the next several weeks, you'll have a new dog. So the four essentials to a stable dog includes leadership, walks, rules, and good nutrition. And we're going to break those down for you, and as, as calls come in, we'll go ahead and get into the rules. But first I want to discuss the leadership. Any dog is a canine species needs a leader or he's a follower. So all we do is go into houses and we change the people from a follower to a leader by changing what they've been doing. What we do is not hard at all. It's just different. You might see some things on TV and you might see some similarities, but the bottom line is that they're all dogs and all dogs understand dog language. And that's what we try to communicate with our audience is that your dog is just a dog. Provide the four essentials so he can be stable and then you can treat your dog like your child. So basically the most common problem that people have, and I just literally got home from doing a, uh, a class about 10 minutes ago, the most common problem that people have is that their dogs don't see them as the leader. People have to realize that dogs are dogs, they're not humans, and because they're not humans, they have different needs than humans. That doesn't mean you're not going to love all over your dog and hug him and kiss him and, and be good to him and give him treats. But instead of trying to convince him that he's a human because he's not, just talk to him in dog language, which is a language that has bumps, bites, and growls. The hardest part for people to do is to realize that their dogs have different needs. Um, for instance, I have eight Rhodesian Ridgebacks. And one of them is right here. I'll see if I can grab one and uh, put them up on the uh, camera. But Rhodesian Ridgebacks or Bernese Mountain Dogs or Chihuahuas or Shelties or Yorkies 
all came 3,000 years ago. All these dogs came from the same common ancestor. And what people tend to do is we treat them differently. We treat them like breed specific. We'll treat one like a pit bull. Oh my God, it's a pit bull. We get bitten by more little dogs than, uh, than by big dogs. Now, Arrow has a really funny thing. Can dogs be de-teethed? Can you have your, your dog's teeth pulled? Well, if you feed canned food long enough, your dog's teeth will fall out. Because guess what? He's a dog. Um, we have some questions we're going to get to, but we want to go first through the needs of a dog. All dogs need four things. Leadership, they need walks, they need rules, and they need good nutrition. What happens very, very often is that we give our dogs the affection and we don't give them what they need, which is leaderships, walks, rules, and good nutrition. Anyone, and we're going to, in a few weeks, we're going to have somebody, um, an, an interview with somebody who is an absolute expert um, at vitamins and nutrition and, and why dogs need certain things. There are things that we're going to discuss about. Um, nutrition, what can affect your dog, what can affect even his behavior. It's really important. Um, but most dogs, like the dogs that pee in the house and they're three years old, the dog is marking his territory. He's saying, hey, this is my place. If you have two dogs, if you've ever heard the phrase somebody getting into a pissing contest, guess where that came from? Pissing contest, quite literally, you'll see one dog pee, the other dog will come and pee over it. That's what they're talking about. Whoever's got the scent on top is the winner, kind of like when we were kids and we used to play the game where we'd put your hand here and the other hand on top and the other hand on top. Whoever got his hand on top was the winner. So what we want to do is teach you guys what you need to do as a pack leader. Once you become the pack leader, guess what? Your dog is just going to say, well, heck, I'm just going to go lay on the couch. I'm gonna, not going to pee in here because it's not my house. So... Very important is for you to become a leader. Now, you're not going to pee on your couch, on the corner of your couch after your dog does, unless, well, hey, that's another show altogether. But we're going to teach the dog that he doesn't need to do that. He doesn't need to bark out the window. He doesn't need to jump on people. He doesn't need to drag you. I call it leash skiing. Um, it's just teaching him like you would teach a child, honey, I love you to death, but you're not allowed to jump on people. You're not allowed to bark incessantly and get me thrown out of my condo complex. You're not allowed to do whatever it is that he's not allowed to do. So we're never going to get mad. We're never going to get frustrated. We're never going to get angry. He's not trying to do this. I, I tell people all the time, he's not trying to do this to piss you off. He's doing this because he thinks he has to. You have to understand that if you are not the leader in a dog's eyes, he's going to be the leader. Now, some dogs will take a month, a year, 10 years until they finally say, well, heck, my humans aren't doing a damn thing for me. I'm going to go be the pack leader. That's when we start getting dogs peeing in the house and pulling on the leash towards other dogs and jumping up at other dogs and biting people and lunging at dogs and animals. That's or, or humping legs, all that. So it's just very often, it's just, and most of the time, it's just we aren't doing something that the dog needs. Uh, I don't know.